item I'm going to be showing you right now is our new item. It's a HDMI 4x4 UTP matrix switch. The part number for this is R014MTXC5E404. The, here you have to see the front side, the front panel. The front panel has the that shows the output one and the individual inputs, output two individual inputs, and so forth. And these buttons you see out here is a, a manual switch you could do. Switch manual switching. Now the back side right here, you'll see four UTP ports for the the uh, for the Cat5, Cat6, or 6A cables. And then the four HDMI ports for the input. Now the UTP is for output, HDMI for input. Now additionally you'll see here two additional ports. One is the RS232 which is for the RS control using like a computer something like that. And then the IR port. The IR port is basically an extension function because in the front you'll notice you have an IR here and that's for to use a remote. So you can do it from distance and changing the, changing the ports. And I'll be showing that later. The extension cable I will not be using. However, I will be showing control over RS232. So, okay, now I'm going to start doing the connections. So, connection wise, first, you will have the, since I'm, since I'm going to be using the RS232, I'll be plugging that in first. And then I'll be connecting the players to the inputs. So, first, I'll. For input A, I'll be using the Apple TV. For inputs B and C, I'll be using the two middle, the, the BD Blu-ray players. And for the last input D, I'll be using the Toshiba DVD player. Now, so here you see right here, I have all four inputs. Now, for the UTP, for order for the receiver side, AM 1 and 2, outputs 1 and 2, I'll be using for the active receivers. So for the output 1, I'll use a wall plate receiver. And output 2, I'll use a box dial receiver. And for outputs 3 and 4, I'll be using the passives. So for port 3, I'll be using this, the bigger Seiki TV. And port 4, I'll be using the Samsung TV monitor. And now lastly, you need a power. Now, if everything is plugged in right, you will notice the lights coming on. Now, the green lights mean it's the green is the green lights you see are here, one is for power, and then the other ones are for the whatever input you have on for the outputs. Now, you notice the orange light just came on, that means it detected the, the signal that's connected to whatever corresponding input it is. So right now I have the input at A at Apple TV. That's why it's showing on right now, since Apple TV is on right now. Now, <clears throat> lastly, and then also another thing you notice right here is the reset button. Now, if you have any problems with the unit, you can hit reset button and it'll re refresh everything. It'll be like turning on and off again. Now, I'm going to start turning on the power for the players first. And then the TVs. Now, notice on the left two TV, the right two TVs, I'll be using active receivers. And for active receivers, we support a maximum of 150 feet, 1080p. On the left two TVs, I'm using passive receivers, and the passive receivers support up to 50 feet, 1080p. So, there you go. Everything sink in, sync up well. There you go. So everything synced in. Now, if you have to, you can make adjustments to the receivers on our active receivers. We have EQ gain toggles on these things. So in case you need to adjust, adjust the EQ, you could do so. So, 
once I have everything set up, now it's everything's ready to work. So here by default, I have we by default is set on inputs, it's set on A for each output. But using a I'll be using a manual toggle to change it all. So you can see a different screen on each T different input on each TV. So here you go. I'm gonna have I'll put one on A, I'll put two on B, I'll put three, it's gonna be on C, I'll put four is going to be on D. And see here. Now, let me just start playing the the actual units in the make sure all all the units are playing. So there you go. You can see everything coming up. Now notice, let me, fo let me focus on on focus in on the TVs. Notice on these two Seki TVs. Let me show you the resolutions so I can show you. The president has a public ghost protocol. We're shut down. There you go. You look over here. It is on 1080p, 60 hertz. So here, everything is burning. Well, you hit play for the tape movie. Teach in corresponding film. Okay. So let me just start messing around with the matrix manual switch first. So let me just start hitting manually. So I have right now, the part of the point of the matrix is you can, for each output you can have different inputs. You have the same input on each one or different up to you. So here I have I'll put one on B, which is a Blu-ray player. I'll put two and three on with the same thing playing. And I'll put four on the Apple TV. You see here. Okay. Now that was for manual control. For I can also, like I said, PVC. I can also use a remote control IR here. For the IR, just make sure you point it to the IR sensor in front of here. Now, here, let me do this real quick. Let me just real quick mute these things. So, let me real quick mute these. Now, for the IR, Pre I previously mentioned there's an IR port in the back. Now the point of that is just to extend the, this sensor to somewhere else. Like you say you have a cupboard and this is covered up. Basically you use the IRS cable and leave it outside the cupboard. So it's easier to use a remote control. But for this case, it doesn't matter. So let me start playing the pacing button. So I'll put on the remote you'll see one to four. Up each one goes to each corresponding output. And you always just press it to cycle through the inputs. So, we cycle input, output 1 to input D, 2 to A, 3 to say B, 4 to C. Now here, let me unmute these again. So, here you go. You'll see, notice it. Notice everything running. Apple TVs. As well as other TVs. Notice everything is all working, running, demonstrate. So, that was with the IR control. So now, I'm going to start using the terminal software to show you the commands after doing the with the remote control. We have like three different commands we use. The main command we're going to use is for the, switch, the switching command, which is SW. And then the format is SW, the number for outputs, and then the letter for the input. So right now, let's go, like I say, right now I have output one on D. So I go SW1 for output one to the input, which I want is to C. So SW1C. And then that will switch, even though it was from here, from output one. To C, and the monitor goes to C. Now, another one, another input we have right here is this. Let me go, let's go back to the R62. I have another command which is same command. 
Let's do, let's do another switch. So, you know, SW, 3, SB. And you notice how the light, it changed from S to B. And the TV changes correspondingly to input B. Let me do one more. Let's choose the fourth one. SW4, so Apple 4, change to D. Switch. To Apple D, to input D. So, that's one of the commands we have. Another command we have is the status and the power is status and one more is power down power down. So the the command for a status just shows you is S T E and when you do it it just shows you which output the output is on what input basically for each core port. And then for power basically it's just a power down to unit. So it's P W D. When I hit it, you notice all the lights go off except for power, meaning this unit is basically like turning the unit off. And I'll just hit it again to turn everything back on. And when you do it turn it back on, I go back to the original where it was before previously. So it's similar to the reset, but it's not because when you reset, everything goes back to the default of input A. But with the power command, it goes to what previous input you were on already. And that is this unit right here.